Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. The markets did continue to go lower today. In fact, it kicked in much heavier uh, this afternoon. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick review of where we are, how the count gets much cleaner now, and um, take a look at where we are, how I'm labeling it, and where we can go to. Uh, as I changed yesterday, I am marking what was initially an intermediate A wave, and this would have been an irregular B wave. And I changed that to a four, intermediate four, intermediate five. And I had left open the, the potential that the market could swing, hold a, a higher support level, swing and turn higher, and then had strong, stronger possibilities of breaking 47.11 and heading up towards 47.34 to 47.60, I believe. In any case, that does not seem to be the case anymore as the market did come down and nearly uh, broke more cleanly the top of wave one. So if this was gonna be a wave, this would be a fourth wave and then with the fifth wave up to finish that intermediate fifth. And now it broke and it's, now it's too big and it's gone too far. So I'll get into that particular side of the count, but I just wanted to uh, go over how it all completed. So now the primary five I'm putting up there. So we're in a much larger correction. And how long it takes to unfold and what's going to continue to kick it down, I think will just play out and it'll be as, as it comes in. Um, but I do think that the tide has turned. And so this picking bullishness, no matter what the cost, is now, I think, is what is beginning to turn. So buy signals uh, from up here may not be as believed as quickly because things turn pretty quick. I want to take it up to the, no, actually I don't need to. I took it to the four to show the count. Let's go down to the hourly. Now, again, um, because we've broken down far enough, I've taken off the Fibonacci extensions, which would have shown those higher levels. And I just want to now open this up so that I can go into more detail about the count that I'm now putting into place. If I'm labeling this the completion point for the minor five, the intermediate five, the primary five, and likely the cycle five, and I can go one higher, and again, say super cycle wave three. So at best we're at a super cycle wave four correction, but I'm moving that up to begin on the cycle level because we're going to be doing a cycle degree wave A down. And so that's how I want to function so that we can get a, a, a picture in our minds of where eventually the market may end up. And so where I go back out to is I'm going to go back out to the weekly chart real quick. This is the fourth wave of one lesser degree if I'm working up from a cycle degree level. I'm looking for a cycle degree wave A. That wave A will most likely find support to complete in the price territory of the previous four. That's the primary four, and this is where that sits. So there's a lot of ground to cover, and it's in the price territory. So it could end here, it could end here, it could end here. That would just be wave A, okay? We still have a B wave and then a B wave rally and a C wave decline. So we're pushing way out in the future here. So weekly chart, but that is that larger picture. So we're now counting basically an intermediate level A wave. And an immediate degree A wave, and, and actually I need to take it up one more to a primary degree A wave. And that then breaks down to we're in the intermediate wave one of that larger move. And within that, 
we're working down from an, a minor degree to fill in all the blanks. Now, I know that sounds confusing, but it's so that we can actually count all the moves. And then we're really going to be honing in on what and what we should expect day to day trading, trading wise. Okay, so back down to the hourly chart and now the internals. This is the five all the way up. And so we're now in the initial stages off of that all time. So we're in minor degree to begin. So minor one, minor two. Then as I look at this, it breaks into five waves. So that was wave three, which subdivided on its own. And that is totally normal. So we have an internal wave three, a four, and a five. And that produces the minute wave one. So we get a five to, to kick off this minor third. Now it subdivides one, two, three waves, five waves, three waves. Trend is changing. If the impulse waves are heading in this direction and I can count numerically and not A, B, C, although it could be a C wave, um, but we're starting fresh. So we, as of yesterday, we kind of came in and we could have A, B, C. That's why we left open the possibility it could turn on its heels and just go straight up and finish a larger pull, this larger, larger uh, wave structure here, but that was not the case. So it turns into you know, a, a, a larger decline, number one, and it broke and that put the additional one, two, and the coming down. So what we're looking for from here is this is basically we're in the third of the third. So it's a three of three move. And as I described yesterday in the update, three of three, as we now run into these on the downside, they're points of recognition. So at some point right in here, see we had two bars, we had two hours of fairly just push, 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 push lower. So, 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 so for two hours, they walked it down, but they did indeed walk it down. And they completed, it walks down over a hundred points. Oh, excuse me, that was the NASDAQ. In, in the S&P, a walk down over 20. <clears throat> um, so when you're thinking of what a wave is gonna be, this is what I'm talking about. So when we see it, it helps to confirm that A, we're in the third. It also helps to go, well, we're gonna start breaking down. So I may short it. Why? Because at least on an hourly basis, we're giving hints that it's going to be coming down. And I'm sure if we broke it down into a, on a 30 minute, a 50 minute, a five minute, you're gonna have intervals where you like, you scooped up your money, then you maybe played it from the long side and then it came back to the short side or you just held short. In any case, it does help us to determine what we can expect from the market. And when that falls in, it gives credibility to what you're counting. So what my expectations are is that this would, and within this three of three, it's again, one, two, three, four, and then we're coming down in the fifth. Now, I wanna add another component here in that on the hourly chart, we broke below the hourly 200. MA, the moving average, and closed below. After market, or into, after, into the, the closing of the close, into the, today's close, they pushed it back up. Then Disney reported and it sank again. So it officially closed below the 200 moving average. That's, in my mind, puts cements that we have weakness in the market. Um, Disney's earnings came out and the stock is now back to basically where it, it was settling before and that's 166, it closed at 174.45 and it's now at 166.20.
and marking in Markwell. Okay, so what also I can now, I'm, I'm adding all of the technicals back into this picture to build what I'm perceiving as going to be a, a down cycle, a down move. And we've been watching the daily and then discussed that they broke but held on to the four. Coming in today and overnight, it, they broke it again. And obviously now it's closed below. But then notice it came down and broke below the eight. It got pretty well below it, but managed to get back and close just below it. So it is, if I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit, confirmation of weakness being present in the market. And so if I'm here, what am I gonna expect from here? Then I go back, but at least I can see the break. I can see that it closed below, but they're desperate. So here's the gig. If you are a buyer or you need to see the S&P higher, between now and Friday, let's say, well, you're gonna to have to kind of produce what may turn out to be a false narrative in the way that you've got to show the market has strength and get itself back above that hourly 200 and close back above it so that you can get higher prices for whatever you need on Friday. If that's if you're bullish and you now have to prove your point that you're gonna stay bullish, you've got to move the market and you've got to get it back above the 200 and close. Right now, it is sitting right at it. So, 44.25, it's right at it. So I'm not, you know, whatever game they want to play, but I, what I'm going to be looking for is, this is a one, a two, a three, a four, and then we get a five. The five should come in and put a low underneath 46.25.25. That's the low thus far. Now, we have support at 46.22. Come down, hold it, maybe go below, but retake it, no problem. It just needs to break that low and put in a new low and on an hourly chart. So this is going to be important. And that would then complete three. I'd be looking for a smaller four and then an additional five to complete this larger three. So I don't think this larger three is done until we down to where I had suggested, which is at the bottom of the previous four. And that's where I thought the market would take a pause and stop and likely complete this third. That will be picture perfect. But I think that we can get there. Um, I don't think the selling is over. And, but, we, but again, volatility is producing really strong swings in both directions. And so when they come, when they're done and they decide, you know, you're looking over and like, oh, if they reach that level, maybe I should buy it. And then you turn back to your other screen and they already did and it's up, you know, three, $4. It's like, wow, well, there goes that buying opportunity. Um, but the trading is good. The trading did many quotes today. It's better than watching paint dry, or it's as bad as watching paint dry, um, or references to uh, watching the lawn grow, or watching grass grow, um, and then realizing that you got there, or you, when you didn't look close enough to realize that it was artificial turf. A lot of little jokes went around today. In any case, I think that we need to complete this third, do a four, and do another five then I would expect a little bit larger uh, pullback, a little bounce, a stronger bounce up. And we'll work out all those numbers should, it, should it, when it is finished and it falls in line, then yes, the Venaches will be in good. In any case, tomorrow, I think we have continued downside, but we cannot write off the bulls. And, and case in point, Tesla, Tesla traded below $1,000 today. And they managed to push it back up to uh, 1,075, I believe it got up to, in its recovery. But you can see they closed it at 64, or 67, they're marking it down after. They closed it at 67, almost 68. So the, the, they just pile back in. And that's a lot of money being shifted in and out. And it's, 
bizarre, but that's what's happening. Amazon, another one from today. Amazon was up over 100 yesterday, and at one point was, I think it was up 50 or 60 again today. Then it tide turned and it closes down almost 100. So there's a lot of shifting around that's producing a lot of volatility. And Amazon and Tesla are both in this market. So trade smart, trade according to where your moving averages are right now. They are continuing to line up to go down. That's on the hourly chart. And trade well. And the next update will be tomorrow, Thursday, the 11th.